I'm Mel Smith, and I do serious and informative, and I really like being informative, so I'm going to do my series. She's talking. <laughs> Even now, it's always the same question. Why don't you act more like a girl? Makeup, dresses, a little swing in my walk is what people mean. The millennium is upon us, and this? This is the level of discussion. The only thing I can say is, I tried. It wasn't as simple as my doctors made it sound. In the hospital, I turned control of my face over to my roommate, Donna a fluffy-haired girl with major depression. She wanted to help. She tried to pinpoint exactly when my 15-year-old girl face looked boyish. This turned out to be a bigger question we could answer. So instead, we settled for the superficial. A jawline that needed shading, eyes that needed definition. Every morning, I lowered my eyelids and let Donna make me up. If I didn't emerge from my room with lip gloss, foundation, blush, eyeshadow, eyeliner, mascara, and feathered hair, I lost points. Without points, I wasn't allowed to walk from the classroom back to the unit without an escort. The teacher handed me off to an attendant to ask, what did you learn in school today? And isn't English literature just wonderful? And I could tell by the tone of his voice that he thought it was a pathetic thing to be a girl who didn't even have enough points to travel a mere hundred feet alone. Either choice I hated Makeup or man trailing in my shadow? It didn't take me long to figure out that a half moon of blue on my eyelids was a better decision. This was how I learned what it means to be a woman. Imagine living in a world where if you were different, you'd be locked in a mental hospital to be scrutinized for years. This is the same cruel and horrifying world that Daphne Skolinski faced in the 1980s and wrote about in her memoir the last time I wore a dress. When Donna stepped back from the mirror, I looked at the girl who was me and not me. The girl I was supposed to be. I really liked my eyeshadow. I knew that George, the counselor, listened in the hall. I really liked my eyeliner. Ever lied to save yourself? I love looking pretty. Ever been so false? Your own skin is your enemy? No affirmations, no points. I knew that later, my counselor would put a check mark next to my morning treatment goal. Spend 15 minutes with a female peer, combing and curling hair, and experimenting with makeup. <coughs> 10 points, as long as I showered and washed my hair first. Dr. Browning said it a multiple diagnosis because of the complexity of my situation. He said the first diagnosis was something called conduct disorder, which made sense to me. I've never really been one to lie about my bad behavior. Then he said the other diagnosis was something called gender identity disorder, which he said I'd had since third grade. He said that that meant that I didn't act the way a girl was supposed to act. I looked at it. I didn't mind being called a delinquent, a truant, a hard kid who smoked and drank and ran around with a knife in her sock, but I did not want to be called something I wasn't. Gender screw up or whatever wasn't cool. He was calling me a freak. He, he was saying that every mean thing that had happened to me was my fault because I had this gender thing. I know I walked tough and sat with my legs apart, and I did not defer to men and boys, but I was still a girl in the only way I knew how to be one. <laughs> Dr. Browning said it wasn't appropriate, and yeah, I really hated him for it. But I guess, if I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I did feel kind of different. I remember the roller skating rink, and a pretty girl, not one in particular, a blend of them all. Her hair flying back and a tingle in my stomach. If anyone hung up that I like to roller skate with a girl, I'd be locked in here forever. I've 
come to realize you have a sexual problem. What do you <coughs> mean? Do you like girls? Yeah, I, I guess so. How do you like girls? They're good friends. I see. Well, do you like boys? Uh, yeah. He asked me about my relationship with boys and I didn't know how to answer him. I just said what I figured he wanted to hear. I've gone out with boys. Have you ever been sexually attracted to a boy? I, I guess so. Are you sexually active with any boy now? No. What I left out about my feelings for the opposite sex was huge. I didn't tell my doctors or my therapist and they never asked. But at night, I remember things. I didn't want to go to sleep. I didn't know whose face was going to pop up next. And this friend, Nick, in Chicago, we, we were sort of dating, but I don't think we even kissed. And one night, I fell asleep in his room. He was in the kitchen getting something to eat. And <coughs> while I was sleeping, I felt this weight pressed down on my stomach. Get off of me! Get off! This balding, slimy head was pressed close to my face. It was disgusting! <coughs> it was Nick's father. We believe you're having a physical relationship with Valerie. What? No way, we're not physical, and I really don't appreciate people spreading rumors about me. Later that day, I knocked on the door of Dr. Epstein's office. Do you have a minute? Yes, come on in. I'm Daphne. He was Valerie's psychiatrist, but he didn't even know me by looking at me. I told him that I didn't understand why the restriction was in place, that Valerie was my friend and we weren't physical. We believe there's been a physical relationship. We? Who was we? There's no way. We've never thought about it. We've never discussed it. And the idea of being with a woman, it turns my stomach. When something turns my stomach, I find that exciting. Here's something from my doctors. A year after I was discharged, I was speeding down a country road to meet the woman who had become my first lover. Thinking of this woman with her pretty green eyes and long brown hair, I got the tingle in my stomach again. And then it turned to a retching in my gut because I saw the face of Dr. Epstein smirking in disgust and slimy satisfaction to know that I had fallen in love with a woman which he long suspected of me. But I've proven the doctors wrong. I don't feel shame in myself or in love. They are the ones who should be ashamed. <laughs>